In this video, we are going to find all real numbers A, B, C, and D, such that A plus B, C, D, D plus C, D, A, C plus D, A, B, and D plus A, B, C are all equal to 2. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The key to this problem is that there is actually some kind of symmetry between these four equations. If we multiply a on both sides of the first equation, then we'll have a squared plus a b c d equals 2a. And if we multiply b on both sides of the second equation, we have b squared plus c d a b equals 2b. Now notice that these two terms are actually equal. And these two quadratic equations about a and b are of the same form. So this inspires us to do similar things on the other two equations as well, which means c squared plus dabc equals 2c and d squared plus abcd equals 2d. Now from these four new equations, we can say that a, b, c, and d are roots to the quadratic equation x squared minus 2x plus a, b, c, d equals 0. Or I can rewrite a, b, c, d to be some kind of constant t equals 0, where t equals a, b, c, d. We know there are exactly two roots for a quadratic equation. So that means these four numbers are not distinct, as in some of them has to be equal. Now the question is, which of them are equal and which are not? Let's divide into cases. The first case is that if all are equal, then I can rewrite the our original equations into a plus a cubed equals 2. And now I'm going to treat this as a cubic equation because when we put a equals 1, left hand side will really become 0. So we know that a minus 1 by factor theorem is a factor of the cubic polynomial. So after factorizing we'll have a minus 1 times a squared plus a plus 2 equals 0. We know that this has no real roots so therefore a can only be 1. So that's the all equal case. Now what happens if some of them are not equal? Let's say otherwise Wolock, if a, b are not equal, then we know that those two values are exactly the roots to this quadratic equation. So I can say that sum of roots a plus b equals to 2, while a, b, the product of roots, is equal to t. However, a, b, c, d is equal to t as well. So that means the, uh, the product of the other two letters can only be 1. But from what I've said earlier, c and d are still roots to this equation, our original quadratic equations. So we further divide into cases. The first one is that c and d are not equal, and the second case is that c and d are equal. Now if c and d are not equal, then I can repeat um, from this stage this, of, this, of our argument. So I can say that the product of c and d is also equal to t. But we know that c d equals to 1, so that means t equals 1. Our equation is actually x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. But that's a very trivial equation because that means x minus 1 whole squared equals 0. So x equals 1 
and that's the same as our previous case, the case written in blue, which means all roots A, B, C, D are equal. We've obtained that already, so um, this um, does not contribute much. Now we come to our second case, is that C is actually equal to D, but that's even simpler because we know CD equals to 1, so C and D are either both 1 or they are both minus 1. Now if both are equal to 1, then I can put it back into our original system. So we'll have the sum of A and B to be 2, or the product, if we put it into this equation, And we'll have AB to be actually equal to 1. Now we can quickly solve that and we'll get A and B are again both 1. Okay, another repeat to our previous argument. While for C and D to be both minus 1, if we do the same thing, we'll have A plus B equals 2, while AB this time is not 1, but it equals to minus 3. So solving we'll have A equals 3 or b equals minus 1. Of course, you can um, reverse the order. So all in all, we have solution sets four ones or three and triple minus ones, of course, and its permutations. So that's our final solution.